Welcome to Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu, and I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Now, today's guest is Sarah Petty. You probably recognize her. She's a photographer, a teacher, a speaker, and a real leader in the online teaching place, space. Now, we're going to talk about one of the things that she's just launching called the Seven Day Photography Challenge. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. This is such an honor, really. We, you know, I've, I've wanted to speak with you for such a long time, and um, mostly because you've inspired me. Uh, over, the, over the years, we've known each other, and I've taken several of your courses. I've shifted the way I have made my business work for me. And Great. it's thanks to you. You know, there's several oh. other photographers who have taught me, of course, but when I think about sales and marketing and really about working with families and children, I look to you. Oh, so, thanks. Good to hear. Absolutely. Uh, you're about to uh, launch, or you've already started doing this, where you're inviting photographers to talk about the challenges. Uh, to overcome the fear of selling. So let's talk a little bit about that and figure out what is it what is it that most photographers fear about selling? Why is it why is there that fear? I think most photographers, myself included, we had a bad selling experience. We were either that pushy sales kid, which was totally me. I hated to sell. I remember doing Girl Scout cookies and jump rope for heart was one where I was competitive. So I wanted to win that jacket, that, you know, really gaudy plastic <laughs> jacket with the logo on it. Cause right. that was the biggest prize. Right. So I would go up to people and you can just see the look on their face that they're like, just be quiet, little kid, be quiet. I'd be like, no, really, we're going to do this and everything. And I, and, and I think you, after time, you start to think, I don't like to sell. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. Because for the most part, we want to make people happy. And that's a, a time where we didn't make people happy. And then, let's face it, in our lives, we've all worked with a pushy, annoying salesperson who just pushy, 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 whether you're buying a, a washing machine or you're, 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 you know, junior high girls going into the clothing store and these, they've got these junior high girls working there who are like, what can I help you with? And they're right in your face. And you're like, <laughs> just leave me alone. And so we all have yep. something that's happened to us. That's created this negative perception of selling. Yeah. So there is that negative perception of selling, but you, you teach photographers specifically on how to sort of overcome that, overcome that yeah. negative perception. Talk yeah. a little bit about how you got your start in sort of teaching people to do that. Yeah. Well, again, when I started my studio, I thought I'm not in sales. I don't do selling. So I just thought I was doing my clients a favor by giving them proofs and then I don't have to push or I'm just serving them better. And then I was working all the time. I was chasing people down. They were saying, oh, I love it. I love it. We're going to order a big one and, and never ordered. And I left a good job with benefits and vacation. And here I am. I had two babies at the time, brand new newborn twins. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm people are coming to me saying they want wall portraits or they want pictures of some kind. Right. Yet nobody's buying anything. So on one point, I felt like I was failing them because they're leaving with nothing. And then on the other point, I was like, OK, I just left a good job. <laughs> and if I'm going to be a business owner, I have to have some income because every two weeks that paycheck was not depositing into my account. Right. And so I had to get real with myself and I had to make the decision. I either have to figure this out or I have to go get a job somewhere because I I'm failing myself. I'm failing my family. I, my husband was so supportive to support me in my journey of, I'm going to be a business owner. Right. And I felt like I was not doing my part in our, in our deal. And I'm um, justifying why it was okay a little bit. I think we all do that. Like, Oh, but I get my freedom and flexibility. But the reality is if we're doing the work, we have to take a paycheck. Indeed. So mindset was a, was a, was a huge part of how you progressed from not selling uh, any art for to families to selling art and actually one of the things I've, I've, I keep hearing you say is that nothing leaves your studio now without it being framed. Yeah. Uh, this is one takeaway that I remember 
uh, I don't know, you probably told this to me like three or four years ago, <laughs> and it's, it's totally the best way to serve your, your clients. So talk a little bit about how you came to that decision. Why was it so important for you to say to your clients, okay, no, no, uh, I know what's best for you. I think you'd want to leave here with framed artwork versus unframed loose prints. It really goes back to my story, and I encourage everybody to look at their story because um, the big reason I think I became a photographer is because I didn't exist as a child. I literally have no photos. I had a brother two years older, and cameras weren't readily available like they are today. The kids of today probably can't even comprehend right. not having every day of their life documented, let alone their childhood. So, so here I have these new babies, and everyone's saying, who do they look like? And I'm like... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> their dad, but we don't know if the babies look like me. And so right. that's why I became passionate about it. And I realized when I very first started, I didn't include frames. I just give them these loose prints. Right. And I ran into a client and, and he, he was like, oh, I still have that you know picture under my daughter's bed. And I thought, what good is it if they go home with this portrait? They have to have a frame. I'm not, I mean, they have to go to someone to get it. Yeah. Why would I not do that for them? And so I really, I had to do some of my own, own mind shift work on myself because I was pretty broken. I had a broken model. I had a broken business. I had a broken sales process, really non-existent. Hmm. And I really had to have some conversations with myself of, okay, <clears throat> if I were doing portraits for my best friend, what would that system look like? Because I had a best friend out in Utah who had her baby's portraits taken because I, we couldn't get together all the time. She had to go to someone else. I mean, I, I clearly would have done them for free. Sure. But she sends me a link to this online gallery. And there were they were fantastic photos, but there were like 500 of them. And I was overwhelmed and confused. And I was thinking, I said, Michelle, I, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, what did the photographer say? And I realized that we people need our help we assume that because we love photos and we could clearly pick out like in our own when I shoot I start looking at this one is my favorite so I make recommendations I would do this one big I would do these two small I would do this in a grouping I have a vision as do you as do all of your listeners of like this is what we would do other people don't know that you know they're good at other things and so we just take for granted that they can make these decisions on their own and frame them beautifully. A lot of people are scared to death of framing. They went to Hobby Lobby and some 16-year-old sold them, sold them a, you know, a bright green mat with a cherry frame on a black and white portrait that was really contemporary. I mean, oh my goodness, they're stuck in there. You know, they've yeah. been burned too with yeah. not. You know, so I feel like as the creator of the art. I'm serving them. So I went back and I created a process. If I were selling this to my best friend, even for free, yeah. what would it look like? How could I hold her hand throughout? How could I make it easy for her? How can I make sure she's getting what she wants? And over 20 years, I just kept refining it. I'd go, oh, it broke there. How can I fix that? What did I do wrong? Why did that client have a problem? Because I always go back to it's me. It's not the client. Don't blame the client. The client, you know, I got a bad client, which you can get if you're getting price sensitive clients. But for the most part, it's us. If they come in, they love it. They don't order. It's us. It's something we didn't do. Right. So I just took that approach of it's something I did. And I would go back. How can I serve my client better? How can I make it better for my client? And all of a sudden, orders started going up. They tripled when I started in-person selling. And then as I worked out the kinks, they kept ordering more and more, asking for more. And I just kept serving them and, and orders kept going up. And what I love is that I kept going, this is not pushy. This is the funnest thing. And I've had employees over the years who have said, you just get so excited on sales days. <laughs> and I feel like, you know... If I could go back to when I was a kid and get portraits of me and my mom snuggling when we were two, I would love that. And I feel like I'm giving that gift to my clients. Are they paying for it? Sure. But for me, it's on a higher level. And I know you feel this way. Like we're driven to create that art Absolutely. and those memories for those people. The money will come right. if we can figure that out. But but first and foremost, we are about that passion and that image and, and capturing that family's spirit and who they are. Right. And um, and then the orders just kept going up from there. Awesome. Now, you've mentioned uh, sales and serving and helping all in one sort of breath. And I think that's sort of indicative of how we should be 
really presenting ourselves to our clients as a, as a way of serving them, as a way of helping them. Because as you're, you're right, I mean, a lot of people simply do not know what the options are out there. Of course, they have the Groupons to go to or uh, the, the Michael stores, which are on the East Coast. I don't know if they're in Illinois. Yeah. But, you know, that's where they, they lean on. Un- Unfortunately, that's the option, you know. And what we can provide them is more of a customized solution. I think this is where uh, I've seen the, the greatest improvement in my business is when I spend the time learning to serve them, truly understand what their needs are, and then deliver on that, those needs. Yeah. Then there is no question about how much is a, a 20 by 30 canvas print because I have, yeah. I have met their exact needs, right? So when yeah. you're able to customize yeah. it, then things definitely sort of open up. Let's talk about those mindsets. What other objections have you heard from photographers about sales? I know, obviously, price is an issue. Um, let, yeah. let, me, let me throw you one, though, that I just took okay. out. So I have clients sometimes who are uh, out of town. How do you serve yeah. clients out of town, Sarah? Yeah. Well, this is more of a business model question than a sales question sure. almost. Sure. But a lot of photographers are either in a destination location or like you, a wedding photographer who travels. But for me, I'll tell you what my my business model decision is that um, I have to meet with my clients before okay. in person and I have to sell to them in person and and present to them is how I say it because – that's how I can serve them. I'm not serving them by putting it online or sending them a disc. Sure. I'm overwhelming them and making more problems. So so what that means for me is I have two choices. I either make it happen. So literally, I had a client fly in from D.C. I'd photographed her daughter her whole life. She wanted me to do senior pictures. Flew in the night before, came in in the morning. We shot all morning. They went to lunch. Andrea Power retouched or edited, put her presentation together. We texted her about two o'clock. They came back, ordered and left town. Um, So I've done that. We knew we scheduled for it. We knew it was happening. And other clients, I've, I've not gotten that business because we're not a good fit. And I'm okay with that. Now, I have a great client. I make an exception here or there in this case. I have a great client who's always come to me who knows my system. We, we did it for her first child, moved far away for a second child. They were only in for Thanksgiving. I think I shot at 5 o'clock the night before Thanksgiving or like 4.30. Wow. So I wasn't willing to work Thanksgiving Day. I have a strong family first filter. But we Skyped just like you and I are. I didn't give files. I didn't give anything. We went through. It was a higher than average order. But because I knew she'd been there before, she wanted the same thing as her first child. I wouldn't do that with any other client. Like if someone's never been to me, it's not going to work. They need, I want them to see them huge on my camera room wall. I want to be there to give them that experience with the music where they cry. It's part, that experience is part of what they've earned as being a parent and I want them to love it. So for me, that's the business model choice that I've made. This is such uh, such an important point. I think uh, people who are listening in or watching this uh, this interview should really take that away from from our conversation is that you've got to set boundaries. I think a lot of people, uh, me included, uh, have sort of said, oh, anything, anything goes. And what happens then is uh, there are no rules and things go crazy, you know? Yes. Uh, so I, I have to remind myself all the time, listen, this is who you're serving. This is how you're going to yes. serve them. And this is what this is how you're going to be actually producing the work for them. Um, and everybody wins that way, right? Yes. And a little nugget for your listeners. Sure. Guys, write this down. It's okay to say no. Yeah. Yeah. When I first started, I said yes to everything. I was photographing our governor at a home party in the dark with the wrong equipment. Everyone's like, oh, your clients will be there. No, they were state workers who wanted a promotion. I'd never seen any of these people before, never saw them again. I was away from my family and I said, this is not fun for me. This is not what I signed up for. And so I realized pretty quick, because I have a low pain threshold, (laughs) that I didn't like that. So... Um, people want me to photograph their horse at noon in the middle of the 100-degree country. I say no. So it's really freeing. Um, people say, oh, the competition, I have to be cheap. No. If people call me and I go through my sales, I have seven steps on the first phone call that I go through with every person who calls. If I go through that and they say, oh, my gosh, I love it, but I just want a CD out of a $200 budget, we're not a good fit. 
And I'll just say that. I'll say, you know what? It, it doesn't look like we're a good fit because I kind of shared what we do. We're creating heirloom artwork and I went through all these steps, but there are a lot of people who can help you and I wish you good luck. We don't have to be crabby. Yes. I mean, we're just not a good fit. It's like Absolutely. you meet somebody to date. You can look at it like dating. You meet somebody and you're like, oh, you know what? They're totally different from me, the cool person, but um, you know, I hate to leave my house and they travel all the time. Boom. You know, we're not going to date. It's just not a good fit. Right. So I think when you take the personal failure away from selling, you realize it's okay. I can't serve everyone's issue. You if you look at how many people, if you look at like, what is a healthy photography business need in clients? Let's just say you want to get to six figures, uh, um, a thousand bucks per client. Do math with me here. Oh, um, 20. Well, let's 100 see. clients. I mean, <laughs> you put me on a spot. <laughs> wait, I know. 100 clients with a $1,000 order. Okay, that's, 100 yeah, that's, clients. That's, that would be six figures, yep. Mm -hmm. Seriously, that's not a lot of people. Right. You can say no because what happens is people are going between models. You've got the shoot and burn sort of Walmart model where you're just cheap, you're given, serving a ton of people, but you're given boutique service. And so you're busy over here giving a CD for 200 bucks and then you don't have time to market to get the right clients. You don't have time to sit with your great clients and sell to them in person and really give them all your love and take great care of them. So that's part of what we're talking about in the selling challenge is this boutique model that's high touch, that service that leaves you feeling like the best person in the world and people pay you and they hug you and they thank you. That's what I love about good sales and a good sales system. Awesome. I was going to ask you, tell us a little bit about the seven day photography challenge, but you've already hinted at it. Um, is there anything, yeah. is there anything else that you could divulge about the, the new challenge that's coming up? Yeah. So this is seven days. When you sign up, we give you a worksheet. It's all free. Okay. We give you a worksheet to really get you in the right mindset. So I see people writing notes, notes, notes. I go live on Facebook every day at noon central time. So um, you can go, we have a Facebook group or you can go and you can watch them if you're in a different time zone. I know you probably have listeners around the world, but the key is we all have reasons in our life that we have blocks about selling and we all tell ourselves stories about, you know, can't work in my market. It's too small or there's too many competitors or I, I can't, I, I'm an introvert. I can't sell because I can't be good at that because I'm really shy and I'm, I'm, I have self doubt. I'm not a good enough photographer. I went through all of those things. I started, I was not a good photographer. So every day I'm going to give you guys one little activity that I promise promise you can do and it will leave you feeling so great about yourself. It will leave you feeling optimistic about your business, give you the confidence to know that, okay, oh my gosh, I can be a great salesperson. I don't have to be pushy and obnoxious. I don't have to have Sarah Petty's personality or anybody's personality. I have what I need inside of me. Awesome. Awesome. This is good, good stuff. Um, I will have a special link for those people you know, coming to tiffin box to click on Good. Uh, I want sense. them to to definitely learn from you I this is this is uh, fundamental I think for any working photographer uh, it doesn't have to be a portrait photographer in fact you know you could be a wedding photographer and learn some of the tricks uh, the tips okay. that you're, you're 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 sharing with us through these challenges and I think I love the idea of a challenge because uh, and it's because Everybody likes a little like, a, oh, can you do this kind of a thing? You know, it's like a yeah. riddle that you want to solve. Yeah. And yeah. being able to do the work and say, hey, listen, I got it. it Set you up for the bigger goal in mind, which is, of course, working with people, working with clients and helping their problems, you know. So I love it. I love yeah. the idea of a challenge. So thanks for doing Great. this for all of us. You're welcome. You know, I, I'm really on a mission. I think it's it's that feeling you get when a client is thrilled with your portraits. I get that same feeling when photographers email me and they say, oh my gosh, you said this one thing and it opened up everything for me. My clients love me now and they're ordering. I love that. And that's why I do this because it can change. One, one little activity that you may surprise yourself with can change everything in your business. I'm going to go back to the framing tip that you gave me of several years ago. Okay. I have not sold a single loose print since. And I'll tell you what, the last time I, I, I worked with a, a family, 
she, uh, the mom, usually it's the mom who says, I, I love them all and whatever. So I helped her through the process of selecting the photographs that she wants. And, and then she picked four eight by 12s. And I looked at her and I said, these really deserve to be framed. Where would you like to display them? And she looked at me and said, well, I don't know where to go to, to get framing. You know, I mean, she could have gone to Michael's, as I said. But she leaned on me and she said, can you help me out? And of course, I have a framer in town, a custom framer, who will produce a custom frame, which is to museum specifications, yeah. archival yeah. matting, and yes. she does Good. beautiful work. So now I have a, a, a local vendor I'm actually being able to work and help with as well. Yeah. So it, this kind of synergy is only possible if you have that mindset of, you're not there to just sell them, but really right. help them make that difference in their life. Now, this this mom goes past her photographs every day, and every once in a while, she'll she'll text me and say, "I'm so glad I got these framed. I'm able to see them every day of my kids, right?" Yeah. And she had she has one of her kids in the kids' room where the kids see these photographs too, and it's framed, you know. Yeah. And so. It, it sets everybody up to to really understand and really reconnect with each other. And you can't yes. do that if you give them a USB drive or a CD or whatever. No. Because it's lost. No. All that is lost. It's true. Right? So It's true. This They're calling this the lost generation. They're all digital. And, you know, even though those images exist, they're going to, they're deleted. They're lost on a CD somewhere. Yeah. And I think those portraits should be celebrated on, on our walls. Absolutely. Like you, in a frame. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. This has been wonderful. I look forward Thank to you. sending more people to the Seven Day Photography Challenge. Um, it's going to be fantastic. I hope people, all everybody listening to this, signs up and learns from you as well. Thank you so much. And I'll be in there every day answering questions. So it's not just that 30 minutes. Yes. I'll be in there. So if you're stuck with something, I'd love to meet you. I'd love to help you get unstuck. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again, Sarah. Yay. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody.